Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and I had a subscriber ask a question or kind of make a point which I'll flip in here and I think it's fantastic because uh, we're going to talk about bias a bit and how we personally develop biases towards things uh, even when they've been scientifically studied and yes, I have a personal bias towards creatine based upon my own observations and life experience that is in some conflict with the studies. Uh, yeah, but he points out there that, um, you know, there have been like 300 studies done on creatine and 70% of them show that it has uh, strength benefits. Only 30% of them show no benefit of the actual studies. So, you know, why are you kind of against creatine? Why don't you use it? Why don't you recommend it? So let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing, do a little bit of crafting and let's talk about this. And I think that is a good question. That's a fantastic question because most of the studies do show a benefit. Um, the problem of where I start with a bias and we're going to go into some other stuff with this is because the studies that do show a benefit find that about a third of the population, even novice trainers, seem to be non-responders to creatine, to any type of creatine. Um, and for everyone else, it has a significant benefit. So if you respond to creatine, you will know very, very quickly, like within two weeks, you should see very measurable changes on all your big lifts. Like we're not talking about if your big lifts only go up five pounds, you're not responding to creatine. <laughs> you're not a responder. Uh, that's how significant we're talking about. I tried it four different times, three or four different times, something like that. Followed the full instructions in the manufacturer, including the loading doses. I saw zero change in strength. My squat, bench, deadlift, overhead press rows, nothing changed beyond their normal uh, training range. And I was also natural at the time. I wasn't using drugs, no TRT, anything. I didn't respond to it. Uh, it didn't do anything any of the times and I and so that has always made me bias against something when I've spent my money on it and I didn't even get a placebo effect you know uh, that of course biases me but we know from the research that about a third of the population for some reason have zero response to it in fact we've had whole studies to where none of the people responded to it yet other studies independent studies that have no bias in them uh, to where two-thirds of the test subjects saw like a 12 percent increase in strength on their big compound lifts within a month 12 percent i mean when you think about that that's downright amazing uh but some things that they've noted with it you know they have found that all these studies uh are actually that give the benefit were actually with the cheapest types like creatine monohydrate and that's where it gets interesting because you have all these companies because the supplement industry does what it does creatine monohydrate is very very inexpensive to make right it's cheap to make. And the independent studies showed that the cheapest form worked, got all the benefits, and sometimes they didn't even have to combine it with sugars or loading systems or any of this stuff. Now, the supplement industry, again, being the supplement industry, they know they can't make a profit on that because people are just going to sell the powders cheap. They're going to go pay $10 for a tub that might last them three, four, six months. How are they supposed to turn a profit on that? When you finally find something that works for a sizable chunk of the population, these companies jump in and have to create new forms of it. Oh, this will work for the non-responders. See, we just adjusted this. We, uh, instead of monohydrate, we put triphosphate on it. Uh, instead of just giving, mixing it in water, or you having to mix in grape juice, we, we have this loading delivery system. Now we can charge 30 or $50 for this container. And you know what? I tried those. They didn't work either. The other ones that were supposed to work for the non-responders did fucking nothing when I tried them. Fucking nothing. And that used to puzzle me because, you know, you had all these studies showing it worked, and I had to conclude I was just a non-responder. So, um, there's some other things going on with it. When I look at it of what the way creatine actually works in the body and the way that it helps with certain buildups of metabolites and things, when it works correctly, the thing that I've noted, it seems to just help people through their noob gains. Meaning, I think once someone has reached a certain level of advancement, I don't think that there is a biological benefit to the creatine. And I think that's another factor that people need to factor in. Meaning, um, most of the really successful studies that showed these really significant benefits were people who were inside of their first year of serious training. More advanced athletes, you're finding less studies showing real benefits. You don't see 12% increases in strength. You don't see a guy who benches 300 pounds as a max, come in and bench 365 after four weeks of creatine, all right? You almost don't even see, you don't see that usually after four weeks of steroids. 
occasionally you do, but that's the exception, not the norm. So, uh, what's going on here? You're not seeing that in the more advanced lifters, and that's the thing I've noticed. I've never watched anybody personally go on creatine who I knew. Uh, different people I've known have tried it over the years. I've been in the iron game long enough that I've watched people do it, and I have never observed anybody walk into a gym, start taking creatine, and see the results uh, that they show in the studies. And it's been like seven or eight people I've watched over the years. None of them respond to it that way, but the thing they all had in common, they all had a, uh, they were th kind of through their noob games. These were all guys who were, you know, repping over 200 on the bench, squatting over 300 for reps. They were done with their noob games. They didn't really see anything off of it. Um, nothing significant. Some of them gained a little water. Nothing significant, though. And so that leads me to believe what's really going on here is that for the people who do re respond to creatine, that two-thirds of the population, I think that it helps with your strength stamina through a phase of your noob games. It basically chops down how long it takes you to finish out your noob games from the performance side and of course then the muscle growth side and that would make the most sense because what it does it will increase in theory your training work capacity uh, particularly you know how many reps you can do with a weight on a big heavy movement um, and that's significant I mean if you can go from doing eight reps to ten reps overnight with uh, 200 pounds or whatever or on whatever exercise you're doing or even a hundred pounds and you can go from doing eight reps to doing 10 or 11 in just a week. Well, that is downright amazing. That is a big boost. And if that only costs you $10 to do for a tub of creatine monohydrate, I would say that would be worth it because it's going to give you a month or two worth of extra progress inside of a week or two. All right. And, and I could see some benefit to that. And I would look at that and say, OK, if someone was in their noob phase, uh, because of the data available, I think it's going to help through part of the noob games. I don't think it helps people who are more advanced other than a placebo effect. Uh, because I've just never seen anyone who it did. And, you know, that could be, again, my own observation bias. And I'm willing to admit that. Because in science, you need to have hundreds of test subjects, not seven or eight. How do I know that I didn't happen to get eight people in a row who fit that 30% who are non-responders? How do I know that's not what happened? It very well could have been. Is it likely statistically? No, but you know what? It's statistically unlikely for people to win the lottery or to be hit by lightning, but it happens all the time. It happens all the time, even though it's statistically unlikely. Uh, so, I mean, I've got to admit, I could have just a personal observation bias there. And maybe it really is a fantastic substance, but I don't think that it is. And I think it's only going to be useful for what I've seen in studies and observation, meaning I think it's probably only going to help people who are inside of their first year of training uh, who are responders to it. And I think diet plays a role. We'll get to that in a minute uh, because that's something that's been noted. But I think it might help those people. And you know what? If it helps you, you're going to know instantly. Meaning when you go take creatine, and I mean just the plain old creatine monohydrate, because again, all these studies done on it don't show these other forms have real benefits. It's not independent studies. The creatine monohydrate gave the full effect with just water in all the studies where this stuff really worked. That's all it took. So all these more expensive loading systems are just the supplement industry trying to create their own bias studies to sell a more expensive product. I don't think you need that more expensive product. I think the plain chain stuff's going to work for you if it works at all. If you're a responder, the cheap stuff is going to work just fine. And I don't think you need as much of it as people even think that you do. So you should notice pretty quickly if it works, meaning your eight rep max should turn into a 10 or 11 rep max inside of a week. All right, so if you squat 200 pounds for eight reps, you should probably be doing 10, 11, 12 and within a couple of weeks of starting to take it. If you don't, then you're probably a non-responder. But if you do get that response, then you respond to the stuff. You know what? And if you're paying $10 for a tub of creatine, all right, that, that's reasonable. And I'm saying that as someone who's anti-supplement. I don't think that's unreasonable uh, for that benefit. But if you're paying $50 for it because it's got a special loading system, no, I don't think the data supports that at all. So uh, what else could be going on there? So it's, again, helpful for people with a certain demographic. Uh, as far as training experience and genetic response, but there's also a diet component. They've noted, uh, I've seen one study years ago that showed that vegans responded really, really well to creatine. 
vegans responded well. And even vegan cyclists, like their cycling stamina improved. Well, I thought that was interesting, and they gained mus more muscle. Um, yet, one of the things they've noted, oftentimes people who eat significant amount of red meat are oftentimes your non-responders as well. And that's interesting. That's a really interesting point because uh, my family owned a ranch at the time. I had access to almost unlimited grass-fed Brangus beef and Angus beef. All right? Grass-fed. Free range. I had access to, if I wanted, easily 100 plus pounds a year of it. Anytime I wanted for free. I didn't have to buy it. So, I had a choice of either going to the store and buying lean chicken or taking free grass-fed steaks from my range or you know my family's ranch so which one do you think I ate uh, chicken I had to buy or awesome grass-fed free-range steak that was free just because of my family obviously I'm gonna eat a lot more steak I always ate for years when I was training back when I did this I ate a lot of red meat I ate steak almost every day and I was a creatine non-responder. So, that's an interesting point because you look at the amount of creatine that's in red meat and it's not a lot. Yet, oftentimes you get people who accumulate enough apparently through their diet based on some of the data that people who are eating 8 ounces or 16 ounces of, of lean steak a day don't respond to creatine. Well, there's less than a gram of creatine in, in that steak, I believe. I could be wrong. Someone else could check the map. I haven't looked at it in many many years so maybe I, I'm doing the math wrong and if I am that's okay I will admit that I haven't looked up the number in over a decade but I am thinking it's no more than a gram of creatine uh, in an eight ounce steak people are taking five grams ten grams things like that in the powder form uh, so how then if your diet makes you a non-responder vegans respond amazingly well but people who are eating an eight ounce red meat steak every day or non-responders, maybe the actual effective dose is less than five grams. Maybe all you need is a gram a day to get maximum response from this substance. And maybe people who are getting a gram a day through their diet don't respond because they're already getting enough through their diet. And like every other supplement that has a benefit, what is this substance doing? It's replacing something that could be in your diet naturally if you just ate different foods. All right, that's what almost every single supplement that works does. It makes up for dietary imbalances. Why do you think people consume protein powders? Like anyone who says that they benefit from a protein powder, well, they could have gotten that from regular food. They didn't need the supplement. The same thing with creatine. Creatine is essentially just food. People who uh, eat a steak every day don't seem to respond to it because they're not deficient in it. just a little data point worth noting and I think that's very much the case here um, but you know what I understand that from a health scare perspective a lot of people are scared of red meat even lean red meat I'm not scared of lean red meat uh, in fact I would love to eventually go back to eating exclusively wild game as my only form of meat that I hunt myself um, I can't quite do that at this time long term I would love to so I'd have no problem with eating elk every single day mule deer and elk every day but it's also much much leaner lower cholesterol meat um, than what you guys are buying at the store so I can understand though from a cost perspective and concerns over dietary cholesterol and saturated fat that some people are concerned about eating red meat every day and so then they're doing it th this other way and I suppose that's okay if it works for you and you either don't want to eat that food for whatever reason, that's your choice. I'm not going to tell a grown man or woman how what they need to eat. Okay, that's not my job. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. <laughs> but uh, if you choose not to do that, or it's just a cost-effective issue because it costs you ten dollars a pound for steak like that where you happen to live, okay, I I get that. I understand it. And you want to take this less expensive creatine, and you seem to benefit from it, then by all means do so. But if you take it, and it doesn't seem to work. Understand that you aren't alone. You're not even rare. There are thousands of other people out there who have tried creatine and got zero effect, including people in the actual studies. 
So it's nothing. There's nothing wrong with you. Uh, it just means you don't respond to creatine. Don't worry about it. All right, guys. But that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.